Hey everybody, welcome back. It is Cheaple Multimeter Review Time. Today we're looking at the Rich Meters 403B Digital Multimeter. And this one is a little bit unique in the sense that it is completely automized. That's right, total automation for your pleasure. And what do I mean by automation? I mean, there's no range selector switch. There's no fiddling around with buttons. You simply do one little press and presto, the meter does it all for you. Now, because of the luxury of automation, you do have a limited number of ranges. So you can get this multimeter online, different vendors. Here we're looking at eBay. And as you can see, yeah, it's a pretty cool looking little meter. Now I paid about 12 bucks US for this. And as you can see, yeah, that's about the going price. Price went down a teeny little bit, but uh, all in all, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. So I will put the purchase link at the end of this video. First thing you'll notice, it has that um, nice rubberized boot. And when you initially get this meter, you're going to be fooled. You're going to think, oh my God, I can't undress it, right? It's like completely, you know, it's not going to work. Yeah. But it actually comes off. So. Rest assured, this rubber housing, as you will see, does come off. But that being said, it is a very nice, good, high quality boot. And as you can see, it really protects the meter. Yeah, this thing already fell down a couple of times accidentally, and uh, it is no worse for wear. So no diode mode, no capacitance mode. If you can live without that, then uh, you should be okay. In terms of the actual range for resistance, it is a 40 mega ohm range. So nothing out of this world, but in the same token, completely acceptable. 4,000 count, it is not um, your typical, oh, how can I put it? Looking multimeter, it has a little sort of nouveau retro edge to it. I like the look. Um, yeah, pretty decent. Has the CE, which we know it doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. When we take this guy apart, we'll see what sort of input protection it really has. Um, has a uh, backlight as well as a non-contact voltage. Now I believe this model also has a flashlight, so we'll take a look at that as well. So let's get some testing underway and see what we can do. Now, once it's turned on, as you can see, it says something called auto. So you are in auto mode. Basically everything in this meter is auto mode. There is no manual per se. It is an auto meter. Ha! We're going to start off with my favorite actually. I'm going to go right to the get go, right to the gist of it. And we're going to do continuity testing. So these are these stock leads. Um, my experience has been that uh, with the uh, um, uh, rich meters per se, um, the leads tend to vary. Now the ones that this came with are generic in nature. They look okay. Um, you know, your standard CE logo of certification. Um, nothing else per se. No gauge writing on the wire. Um, tip wise, um, you know, it's okay. You can draw blood. But uh, yeah, so we're going to use these for the first continuity test and we'll see how good it actually is. So, once again, this is an auto ranging meter. There's no continuity dial or switch to set it to. All we're gonna do in this case is strictly put the leads together. Here we go. So as you can see, it is very slow. And this is part of the price you're paying for this functionality. Um, you do get a nice visual indicator and the buzzer itself is loud, but it is bloody slow. So um, personally for myself, I really couldn't do any sort of continuity with this, um, but your mileage may vary and this might not bother you, but it is really slow. Let's try a different set of leads, see if it's any better. Okay, so we have the Probe Masters inserted into the appropriate jacks. Here we go. Wow, dare I say it's, it's even slower? No, probably the same. So 
So yeah, obviously even with a really good set of probes, that makes absolutely no difference. Slow continuity. Okay, we are starting off in the millivolt range. We are at 0.2 volts right now. And as you can see right from the get-go, the uh, Rich Meters 404B, which we're using as a head-to-head -head test, um, has a big advantage. It can actually read into the millivolt range. So the 403B is not doing so well at the low voltages. So we're gonna slowly take it up now. We're gonna go up to 0 0.6 volts, 0 0.7 volts. And as you can see still, that Rich Meters 403B on the left has not kicked in even though it's in auto mode. But no problem with the 404B. So let's take it up another notch. Here we go, up to 1.6 volts. And finally, finally, we have some life coming from the 403. So it does take a while, about a, about a volt or a little over a volt before you're gonna see anything coming in terms of a voltage reading with the 403B. Okay, so now that we're both underway, let's go up, up and away up to a whopping 7.6 volts, 7.71, 7.74, Pretty well neck and neck. Here we go, higher and higher, 12.8 volts. 12.8 for the 403B, 12.9 for the 404. Something else you can tell right away as well is the fact that the 404 is quicker to range, definitely quicker than the auto um, detection method that the 403 is utilizing. Okay, let's go up to 20 point, oh, 21 volts even. 21.13 for the 404 and 21.07 for the star of the show. Okay, we're gonna max it out now. So just 31.4 volts according to the DC power supply. 31.46 for the 403B and 31.56 for the 404. So there you have it. So definitely when it comes down to the lower voltages, you're much better off with the 404B. It's gonna take at least a volt or so before that 403 kicks in. Once it kicks in, however, it's uh, not too shabby. It is a little bit slower yet again in terms of the actual range, ranging, but it is fairly accurate. Now, something else you'll notice as well is the fact that the backlight is still on on that 403B and they were both enabled at the same time. So that's a bit of a bonus as well. It's nice not always having to worry about the backlight when you need it. So there you have it. Right now we're in the milliamp range and as you can see we are at around 31 milliamps and that's pretty well spot on according to the power supply. Um, according to the manual this supports from 40 to 400 milliamps so halfway decent milliamp range so to speak. Uh, let's just take it up a little bit higher let's see how we are. So we're at 150. Once again you still have that delay of around two to three seconds before um, it's actually going to post on the display itself. Um, 220 milliamps, and there it comes, 225, and let's go to 310, and coming up as 315. So all in all, not too bad on the milliamp side of things. Something else worth pointing out is the fact that when you're in the milliamp range, as we are right now, and there is no power or current per se, as you can see, there is an indicator, audible and visual, saying, hey, what's going on? Next up, a really quick resistance test. This is a 10K 1% precision resistor. So pretty fast to range, 10.1 spot on. And let's try a 22 meg resistor. And pretty close, close enough 5% tolerance. So that's uh, pretty quick to range. So good job. AC voltage, not a problem. non-contact voltage mode you simply press the NCP button and away you go so with the uh, 403B NCP works really really well now, apparently there's also supposed to be a flashlight um, but I have tried everything and it is a no can do flashlights not turning on so Fail. Take a look, see what's going on. Hey, baby, why don't you come up and see me sometime? All right, it's time to take it off. Yes, we are going to take off this holster because it does come off. And as 
as you can see, no problem. So yeah, very nice holster. Um, good feel. I like it. Take a look at the meter itself. Let's just turn it off. Turn it around. The standing bale itself, pretty simple. And because it's a touch button, really shouldn't have to worry about. There we go. All comes apart. And as you can see, we have a nice threaded insert, so it doesn't matter how many times you're gonna change those batteries, it will not ruin the device. It has an auto shut off, shuts off around 15 minutes or so um, after you've turned it on. Okay, here we are, time to get down and dirty. As you can see, first of all, there is no shielding, no shielding. So, <laughs> well, I can't say I'm surprised. Let's take a closer look at the meter itself. Pretty clean, pretty darn clean, I must say. Uh, very nice PCB, well done. There's no uh, sloppy flux residue or anything else. Um, for the most part, it looks quite nice. Now it is pretty spare. Um, if we take a look at some of the basic input protection here, um, we do have a, uh, it looks like a riser board up here for some reason. That is on the milliamp range. So yeah, it is connecting through a riser board into that input jack. Um, here we have a very, very tiny, shall I say microscopic fuse on the milliamp range. Um, that is actually on the current range. That's a 10 amp, 250 volt fuse. So let's take a quick look at the input protection. Here we are on the milliamp range slash current range. So we have the fuse, the 250 volt, 10 amp, tiny, tiny fuse. And we have the current shunt as well. And that seems to be it. Um, yeah, I don't see any diode clamping going on. Um, not too much. Let's take a look at the voltage side of things. So we've got uh, our melts over here. And it looks like that's our, uh, how? So those are five mega ohm resistors, two of them. So there's a uh, 10 megs in total there. I'm assuming that would be like a shunt resistor going on here. We've got more melts up there. Um, no PTCs, no mobs, pretty sparse. Um, really basic in terms of the overall input protection. So you definitely don't want to put this anywhere near anything other than your basic household voltage. So strictly SMD in terms of the actual components on board the PCB. Um, not a whole lot uh, to speak of. Um, what else? Anything, the only other thing that really stands out perhaps is this um, little IC right here. If I can zoom in or not. But yeah, that is a, a six pin uh, SOT23 package. Uh, analog to digital conversion switch made from Texas Instruments. Um, but that's pretty well it in terms of the bells and whistles. Now this did have a pretty good NCV detection mode and I'm trying to see what they were using in terms of any sort of a uh, filament. Um, all I can see at this point is strictly here it says NCV and it's probably embedded into the PCB. Um, but yeah, very good. Um, in terms of the actual usability of it, but surprisingly there's no exterior filament. So anyway, it's working and works really well. The fab date on this board is, if I can find it, wow, I can't find it. I'm gonna assume maybe that's the date. So I would assume, ho ho ho, March, 2018. Yeah. Oh, here we are. I am 
Yeah, so, so, so. Version number seven. Um, well, it was pretty close. July 3rd, 2018. So there you have it. So fairly, you know, not super, super new, but not super old either. Another thing worth mentioning is the fact that, um, well, I couldn't figure out why the flashlight was not working, but now I kind of see why. Um, this here is where I'm assuming the LED would have gone, but it appears to have either been, God, I don't know, broken off or, but I didn't find anything in the casing itself or, or just not utilized. Um, perhaps they forgot to put the, the LED in. But yeah, definitely that is where the uh, flashlight LED should be residing on the PCB. Uh, in this case, it is AWOL. So, uh, uh, interesting. Well, I don't have a flashlight, but that's okay. I don't need another flashlight. <sighs> okay, so taking apart one step further on the other side, uh, we don't, on this meter, have the uh, typical, atypical rotary selector switch tracks. All we have is that one SW1, which is the main uh, switch to enable and disable the meter. And really that's about it. Here is where the uh, zebra strip, Lastomar, goes right on top here. And a little bit of pressure is what actually feeds the display. Um, looking at the input jacks themselves, they are the through hole variety that are actually soldered as well. And you know what, the soldering job is pretty darn good. So. Um, I don't see anything in terms of long-term uh, issue with those. Seems quite, quite good. Um, still not exactly sure why they have this daughter board. I'm assuming it's just a matter of space. Uh, for some reason, they couldn't make the PCB um, any bigger, so they had to utilize this sort of a riser to fit it in the case. That's the only thing that I can think of. But uh, in a nutshell, yeah, that is it in terms of the innards of the Rich Meters 403B. Closing thoughts on the Rich Meters 403B. I like this guy. Now, I wouldn't recommend this as a first multimeter, but definitely if you've got a second, third, fifth, 105th, whatever the case may be, that additional multimeter, this is a great little addition to the bench or to the toolbox or to the garage. You get the idea. It's auto ranging. There's nothing to mess around with. Yeah, there are some caveats. You don't have your capacitance, your diode and it is a little on the slow side in terms of ranging. Plus that lower voltage level, it's just not gonna happen. But if you're not too picky and you just want a good basic all around voltmeter, the little pizzazz, the 403B has you covered. A little uh, perturbed by the fact that my flashlight LED was missing, but I guess it happens every now and then. All in all, the 403B is a pretty good meter and I'm gonna give it a solid three Thanks for watching everybody. Till the next review, keep on testing.